We can begin. We can complete action if we want a number of uh, things. The first bill on the agenda is one we've already considered and reported unanimously before. It's a bill that Senator Corn and I have worked together on for years to provide uh, prosecutors with important new tools to go after public corruption. Um, obviously, I have some feeling toward giving and wanting to give uh, law enforcement the tools they need. We've worked out a bipartisan, bicameral agreement with Congressman Sensenbrenner that hope will enable us to make real progress in this area at long last. Uh, in regard to this bill, the public trust is not something to be taken lightly. Decisions public officials make should be transparent, and public officials should be held accountable for those decisions. We're elected to represent the in, uh, interests of our citizens and not ourselves, and trust deserves heightened accountability, and with greater trust, you get more accountability, and that's what public service is all about. Now, while this bill addresses self-dealing by public employees, it does not extend to private sector officials. How to appropriately address that issue is still being discussed and should be given appropriate consideration. This is a complex issue that requires careful consideration and a reasoned approach. I'll take up S-401, and uh, I will... And I offer a substitute on behalf of myself and Senator Cornyn. And uh, if there's no objection, the substitute is agreed to in the bill as amended is before us. I should note this is a bill which, <coughs> which Senator Cornyn and I have worked on together for years. It would give, in fact, I see Senator Cornyn coming in right now. It would give investigators and prosecutors important new tools to more effectively detect and prosecute corruption by public officials. It reflects bipartisan, bicameral agreement with Congressman Sensenbrenner and Quigley, who have introduced a companion bill in the other body. The substitute bill restores in a clear, unambiguous, and limited way the crucial honest services broad statute, which the Supreme Court gutted last year in the case of Skilling versus U.S., it restores for prosecutors and investigators a key corruption fighting tool. Actually, if we're serious about addressing, and I know we are, the kinds of egregious misconduct that we've witnessed in recent years in high-profile public corruption cases, then I believe Congress has to enact this legislation. It's time to strengthen the criminal law to bring those who undermine the public trust to justice. Now, I understand that some senators may have had concerns about adequate safeguards and intent requirements in Section 12, the fix of the gratuity statute, which seeks to do what everybody in the public assumes, that public officials should not be bought. Now, we added extra safeguards into that provision when Senator Specter raised concerns a few years ago. We've added more this year. I... Uh, both Senator Cornyn and I wanted to make sure that you didn't have anybody who was unwittingly caught up in this statute. But there is one thing that unites everybody here, I believe, is that public officials shouldn't be bought. And um, they'll only be used to go after corrupt conduct. Now, if there are other concerns, of course, uh, uh, Senator Cornyn, I'll be happy to meet with anybody, but I'll yield to Senator Cornyn now if he has something further to add. But I would, I would point out that um, this is something we've worked with both Democrats and Republicans in the House and the, and the Senate, Senator Cornyn. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm proud to join with you and Senator Kobachar and Senator Whitehouse, uh, Senator Kirk, in uh, sponsoring this impe important piece of legislation. This will add uh, clarity and provide enhanced tools for federal law enforcement to fight public corruption. And we know that public corruption is not a, a party issue. It is uh, unfortunately infects both uh, of our major political parties, and uh, it's uh, the human condition, unfortunately. Um, it is a problem in terms of the public's confidence in, in uh, their elected officials, 
and it's, we know it's a problem not only here in Washington, but at the state houses and the city halls across the country as well. And we know that our, this, uh, these efforts to provide tools to fight public corruption are part of, and parcel of our um, adherence to the rule of law. And as guardians of the public trust, we need to do everything we can to, uh, to uh, make sure that public officials are held to a higher standard in terms of knowledge and propriety. This legislation is very carefully drafted, as you have noted, to provide for tougher sentences and clarifications of the existing theft, bribery, fraud, embezzlement, and gratuity statutes. For example, it cracks down on theft or bribery related to entities that receive federal funds by increasing the maximum sentence for a conviction from 10 to 20 years and lowering the threshold that prosecutors must prove from 5,000 to 1,000. And it also clarifies the law in response to several court decisions narrowly interpreting the public corruption statutes. For example, the bill makes clear that the corrupt procurement of valuable intangible property interests such as licenses, contracts, permits, and government grants are covered. I want to thank uh, specifically Senator Kirk and Senator Leahy for their outstanding work in helping craft a provision that addresses the complex and troubling problem of public sector honors services fraud. And finally, I want to note a potential technical correction to Section 12 of the bill that would make explicit that a public official could be prosecuted for the acceptance of st status gratuities only, only where they knowingly violate applicable gift rules. In other words, the same rules that apply to us in the c Congress and those that apply to the executive branch already. And I'm committed to working with you, Mr. Chairman, and senators on both sides of the aisle as we uh, move this legislation forward. Thank you. Public corruption has a pernicious effect on the institutions of our representative government, undermining the confidence uh, that Americans must place in those with whom they entrust political power. Every member of this committee favors rigorous legal enforcement to rout out corruption anywhere and everywhere it may be present. As a result of the great concern Congress has to protect the American people from public corruption, there are more than 20 federal statutes that prosecutors may and do use to eliminate such fraud and dishonesty. I nevertheless oppose S-401 because a number of its provisions make unnecessary changes to governing legal standards that risk unintentionally criminalizing innocent behavior, that ignore criminal intent requirements essential to our system of justice, that would usurp the proper enforcement of local crimes by local jurisdictions, and that may end up having other unintended and unnecessary consequences. There are uh, some serious problems with this legislation, a few of which I'll address briefly. Uh, for example, Section 3 unwisely expands federal mail and wire fraud statutes to include not only offenses involving money or property, but also activities involving any other thing of value. Such statutory language is, in my opinion, hopelessly vague and potentially overbroad, the very opposite of the precise and well-defined criminal statutes that provide clear notice of the activities that have been made illegal. Although the full extent of its application is still somewhat uncertain, Section 3 would at the very least bring within the scope of federal law false statements made in obtaining state or municipal licenses. That approach was unanimously rejected by the Supreme Court in a case called Cleveland versus United States decided in 2000. The court held that such activity falls outside of current federal law and the court warned that equating issuance of licenses or permits with deprivation of property would subject to federal, federal mail fraud prosecution, a wide range of conduct traditionally regulated by state and local authorities. Thus, uh, even though this case was decided as a matter of statutory interpretation, the court added that there are some federalism implications that would accompany that move. Equally unwise, in my opinion, is the inclusion of, in Section 12 of the bill that would eviscerate the basic requirement in federal gratuities law that gifts are criminal only when something is expected, even if not promised or given in return. Once again, the Supreme Court unanimously rejected such a broad interpretation and limited federal criminal prosecutions to circumstances where there is a link between the gift conferred and a specific official act for or because of which the gift was given. In the United States versus Sun Diamond Growers, decided in 1999, the court warned that the approach taken in Section 12 of this bill would criminalize perfectly innocent activities like, quote, 
token gifts to the President based on his official position and not linked to any identifiable act, such as the replica jerseys given by championship sports teams each year during ceremonial White House visits, or a high school principal's gift of a school baseball cap to the Secretary of Education by reason of his office on the occasion of the latter's visit to the school. Criminalizing gifts given simply for or because of an official's position, as Section 12 of this bill does, would put a whole range of legitimate actions at risk of federal prosecution. In these and many other respects, I fear that uh, S-401 may represent the sort of overcriminalization that many Republican, Republicans and Democrats alike, liberals and conservatives alike, rightly view as a serious threat to the rule of law in American society. Although I've got concerns with this legislation that I've expressed today, I want to make clear that I'm very concerned about public corruption. I ad admire and, and respect the effort to go after it and to rein it in. And the event, in the event this doesn't pass, I remain, of course, open to discussions about how we can improve this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no uh, further questions. The, uh, Mr. Work Chairman, work? just briefly, oh, sorry, sorry I, I thank um, Senator Lee for his comments, having prosecuted a number of cases uh, against public officials. I've tried them personally for weeks on end. Uh, and you, re you deal with the actual words of the statutes. I use every tool I was given. Um, we didn't use honest services. I don't think that was considered um, exactly a crime at the time. I always thought you had to have a quid pro quo, which I sought to prove, and sometimes a little bit difficult. Uh, but there were certain cir circumstances in which that was not absolutely required, a quid pro quo. I just guess what I'm saying is I think Senator Lee is raising a good point. Historically, cl criminal law has had clarity. And the great crimes of, as set forth like robbery and burglary and theft all had clear elements. You had to prove each and every element. Uh, you knew what was a crime, what was not a crime. And when you get, what, 26 pages here and, and uh, we, we're wrestling with uh, things such as honest services, that in itself should make us a little bit uneasy. Senator Lee, I understand when Auburn was at the White House and they gave the president a jersey that said Obama number one and Auburn jersey, could that have been a crime? Well, that makes you a little bit nervous, if that's possibly so. Um, You've been very honest in your feelings. I appreciate that. Senator Cornyn, you were sick of it. I just had a couple of quick comments. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, one of the great things about this committee is we have a lot of very experienced and very uh, knowledgeable uh, lawyers, and uh, certainly I respect the views of, of people like uh, Senator Lee and, and uh, Senator Sessions and others who have questions about this legislation, and my hope is that we can continue to work on this to satisfy some of these concerns. I believe, as Senator Lee said, we're all we're all opposed to public corruption, and the question is, how do we craft the statute with the kind of clarity uh, to give uh, people notice that they're doing things they should not do, and to give the prosecutors a clear um, roadmap uh, forward? But I would just uh, say that there certainly. There has to be, it, it has to be offensive, certainly, uh, to the sensibilities of all of us for public officials to accept a gift, even where the prosecutor may have a difficulty of showing a quid pro quo, which would be a bribery. And this, what this attempts to do is address that, uh, that situation. And I would just say, in terms of the uh, jerseys and baseball caps and other legitimate gifts, I think the legislation makes clear we, in fact, explicitly exclude from prosecution any gift allowed by applicable rules or regulations. So anything that, for example, we could get, receive as a gift as a United States senator would be excluded and could not be a basis for prosecution. Same thing for the President of the United States, subject to gift rules that are, are applicable to him. So I would just... But I think uh, we, these are all important issues that we need to keep working on, and you have my commitment to try to try to uh, address those. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mrs. Feinstein. Aye. Mr. Schumer. Aye. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Durbin. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Sessions. Aye. M
Aye. Aye. By proxy. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Ms. Kovachar. Aye. Mr. Franken. Aye. By proxy. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Blumenthal. Aye. Mr. Brassley. Aye. Mr. Hatch. No. Mr. Kyle. Aye. By proxy. Mr. Sessions. No. By proxy. <coughs> Mr. Graham. Aye. By proxy. Mr. Cornish. Mr. Lee. Present. Mr. Coburn. No by proxy. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the votes are 15 yeas, 3 nays. Then the bill as amended is? 14 nays, I'm sorry. 14 nays, yes. 14 yeas, 14 nays. Then the bill, the bill as uh, amended is could, could we passed. It will be uh, reported to the floor. Could so. we do